I got a new notebook. Oh, 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 which like oh, oh. it's a cute notebook oh, that has cool. a little hot air balloon on oh, it. Oh, that's Isn't so it cool! And if you look real close, from? you can see Hootsie in there. Yep, dead. <laughs> oh, oh no! And with that, Rich, why don't you go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage? Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower, and through grand halls past lock and key came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither, from yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire. A ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things. But listen close, and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear. A song that calls the spirits there. A song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal. A rocking horse with ashen mane. Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame. With mighty hooves and sturdy frame, no better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky, when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion. Each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toy is placed in a chest, with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch light hour. You stand at the base of the Queensway, a giant causeway that stretches from where you, what, Mace? (laughs) (laughs) I was just happy to be here. You stand at the base of the Queen's Causeway, this giant pathway that leads from where you entered the Feywild, Prismere, to what appears to be a wall of mist and fog. The causeway itself is broken and crumbling in places, and what once would have been a beautiful thoroughfare that led somewhere is now no longer traversable. And it took you a while, but you were able to make your way down the the um, the stepstone mushrooms that led all the way to the swampy ground. And what you're standing on now is covered in moss, thick with fetid waters, the smells of decaying leaves and grass and other plant life is thick in the air around you. Bioluminescent mushrooms and other entities can be seen darting in and out of the thick fog that does obscure your vision. But there are heavy winds that occasionally break apart (coughs) the fog and allow you to see deeper into this land of swamp. And as you look down at the ground around you, you see that the mangrove trees, their giant gnarled roots stretch out like long fingers as they plunge deep into the earth, almost as if they're holding it together. And it is here 
that you see Gricko coming back to you after he'd rushed forward in an attempt to rescue Hootsie, believing that she was in what you had seen for only a flash, a floating hot air balloon that was careening through the sky at a rapid pace. But realizing that this land is new and treacherous, Gricko turned his way back to you and met you here at the base of the Queensway. With a loud avian noise and the flapping of wings, a crane alights into the air, piercing the, the quiet of this place and seemingly alerting a band of brigands, rabbit folk brigands that have surrounded you at this point. You have barely moved from this spot as a group of them march towards you, wielding their weapons aloft and singing a jaunty tune about a an entity known as Agden Longscarf, the Brigand Prince of Prismere. And as they encircle you, some of them with their weapons drawn, some holding standards, one of them steps forward, a female who wears an outfit that befits her rank, very clearly higher up in status than the rest of these rabbit folk around that are around you. As she calls out to you and demands, this is a robbery. If you resist, we'll beat you black and blue. <clears throat> um, hi, hi, hi there. Uh, what, what is your name? My, my name is Morning Frost. They begin to circle around you, and as they do, they hop this way and that. They're very bouncy in their movements, exactly what you would expect these Feywild rabbit folk to be. And though they are committing a robbery, they seem joyful, jubilant almost. Um, yes, Michael, did, did you my have companion a see the, the hot air balloon? All of you saw the hot air balloon. So Gricko would presume that they were would have, would have been able to see it as well. The the, 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 the that my friends the be able to see the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The balloon that had hoots in. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you saw it when you were atop of the Queensway. Um, okay. And yeah, even yeah, though yeah, you yeah. couldn't see further into what was off in the distance, you were able to see up into the. Sorry, it's my my music. It keeps doing that weird thing. How many rabbits are there? There are a total of six of them. Oh. So we're being surrounded and <clears throat> yes. circled. Are they pointing weapons at us? Uh, there are two of them that are pointing weapons at you. One of them has a giant snail that they clearly ride upon. And one of them is clearly the snail handler. Um, I would say it's easy to see that the snail is not, um, is not very tame or at least is not, they are not able to handle it very well as it doesn't seem to be listening to orders. It's very clearly, uh, Per perturbed, or not perturbed, it's very clearly uh, distraught. I'll say. <clears throat> Aomer, son of Aomond, what news of the Riddermark? <laughs> Clary! Are you okay? Are you having a stroke? <clears throat> what the hell was that? Is this robbery? That's what she just said. Uh, we don't have time for this. I'm sorry, there's been a misunderstanding. Are we this is a robbery. Are we if you resist, we'll beat you black and blue. Uh, and my name is Jevik. Good day to you. J J Jared? Jevik. How do you spell that? J E B B E K. Oh, Jebik. 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 I um are you, do you represent uh, any sort of uh marauding uh clan or uh no, they, it was a prince. Oh. We are the brigands that follow the banner of Agden Longscarf, brigand prince of Prismere. Mm. And this is a robbery! Uh, oh, no, they it's all start not. to cheer. They're <laughs> excited. You <laughs> hear some of them as they begin to sing that chant, that chant again with sticks and stones will break your, your, your nose, will beat you blind and steal your clothes. And they are very excited about it. Do they seem intimidating so. or, a, or threatening? Uh, well, some of them are pointing weapons at you. Um, I would say <clears throat> you imagine if a scuffle were to break out, they are probably an equal match for you, but they don't seem like hardened criminals. 
Um, sorry, I feel like there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. My daughter is in a runaway hot air balloon. I'm sure this happens all the time in the Feywild. But we're new here, so it's a little bit distressing to us. So, uh, if you will let us pass, uh, this will, uh, not turn- we will not turn this, uh, robbery into what I believe Gideon calls us, her a massacre. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we we we'd, we'd reschedule. <laughs> we'd be happy to reschedule the robbery, but we're we're in quite a rush right now. Oh man! Come on, Wait, guys. Was that a threat? Were you threatening us? Oh no! I Did was, you hear that? I was that trying was to. I was trying to be all diplomatic. You notice that as they hop around you, they st- they start to slow down. Their ears turn this way and that one of them attempts to look at you menacingly but his little rabbit nose twitches in a really cute way and it completely ruins the uh the entire attempt um but jebek does cross her arms and looks at you uh quizzically for a while you say you're in a in a bit of a pickle your daughter is in a bit of pickle well, uh, and no, no, are... she's in an air balloon that doesn't look anything like a pickle. Don't you have big ears? Can you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that you... is very clearly not the question that I asked you. She's in a runaway hot air balloon, and I'm feeling quite distressed oh. about it. Yeah, she, now... is the, she turns and she begins to chitter with uh, um, with one of the um, hair and gone behind her. Do you mean the one that crashed into Slanty Tower? Oh. It crashed! Just in, a few minutes ago. Well, I mean, Gricka, we all kind of saw it crash. I mean, it was like on... Oh, I thought it disappeared. <sighs> I saw it disappear into the fog. Was but it clear that it was not I was a landing? Dog. It was clear that it was... Okay. It was very clear that it was a rogue hot air balloon that was okay. uh, not being controlled. Uh, 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 this uh, slanty tower, what does it look like? It is a tower that is slanty. Okay, we have our lead. Let's go, fellas. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Excuse us. No, no, no. You must pay the toll. <coughs> this is a robbery. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Is this a toll or a robbery? Are we being detained? Is this a toll or a robbery? It is a robbery. Hmm. How much are you all uh, robbing? She reaches down and she picks up a, a beautiful carved gourd oh. that has oh, a topper of gold. And she looks at it uh, longingly and lovingly. Well, it's quite simple. I demand the feeling of delight that you remember from the best gift you've ever been given. If you can procure that feeling, put it in my gourd, you can be on your way. No, oh, you, you want to take one of our memories and we, we won't have keep the memory. It'll be with you. Oh, it's not a memory, it's a feeling. Mm. Oh, it means we can't feel the feeling ever again. I feel like this is our first time in this space. She looks probably... she looks confused at the things that you're saying about it. You mind um, if we, uh, but she huddle? doesn't respond. Just real real quick personal huddle. Just yeah, a yeah, little, little, little four man chat. Yeah, because you know Tom is of the essence, so I'm getting you know. She puts her arms in the air and slowly backs away and joins the circle and she starts to hop with them. You notice that they're all hopping in one direction, then they start hopping in the other. They kind of notice what each other's doing, they'll hop twice and then hop three times to the to the next. Then you start to hear that song start playing up with one of them. Then they started into a round. They're clearly just having the greatest time hopping around you and singing. All right, fellas. This is one of those tricksy fay riddles. All right. This is what, this a riddle. Is what, I think it's a riddle. I mean, this is where Gricko's a Viking. So, uh, you got any leads? You got any, got any thoughts? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little in distress, but luckily I have a <laughs> goblin defense mechanism to keep my cool when there's legitimate uh, weapons being pointed at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm this close to losing it, fellas. <laughs> 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 we need to get through this. I can, I'm only getting about three of the words that they're saying every sentence. What? This is about the worst robbery I've ever been a part of. I don't understand why we don't just rob them. We're trying to get to Slanty Tower quick like. We steal the snail. We beat them all up. <laughs> and we, you know, we leave a couple rabbits in the dust. And we take the snail and we get there super quick. I don't really want to kill anyone. I I don't have any way of not killing with my mind is the problem. If we get into a fight, I'm not going to be very much help. You are such a drag, man. <laughs> tell, tell it to my you mind power. You can't just kill everybody. No, I can't. I don't want to do that. Oh, God. No, but look, Gid, look. Let's say we beat them up, right? And yeah. then we steal the stuff. Yeah. Well, A, we know we can't steal. Right? What? No! What? That was back in the carnival. Here, it's all they're trying to steal from us. 
Oh, yes, they were violating we, we the free? laws. Are we free of those laws? Those laws no. are just for the carnival, no. man. It's the laws for here even more so than a carnival. No, you don't know that. Oh, for excuse a fact. me, excuse me. <laughs> they stop their hopping for a second. Uh, are there free laws here that the laws of the land are inescapable, especially here outside you, of the carnival? You see Jebek's eyes kind of shoot back and forth. What laws are you speaking of exactly? The uh, rule of hospitality, the rule of ownership, and the rule of reciprocity, if you. Uh, are familiar with them, you might be about to violate one of them very seriously. <laughs> well, <laughs> that may be so, but since the hourglass coven came into power, oh. things have been a little, how do you say, lax. Oh, oh, are you allied oh. with the coven? <laughs> no, we are the Bannermen. Pagden Longscarf, <laughs> the Brigand Prince of Prismere! Oh, I have a question. Thanks to Agden Longscarf, Brigden, oh. Brigand Prince of Prismere! And she bows. Oh, <laughs> I have a question. Uh, very lovely giant snail. I would love to learn that snail's number. Uh, but before you do, what do you feel is like the biggest fear of like a snail? Like what, you know, I, I'm, I'm a snail enthusiast myself, but I want to deal with little, little fellas. Uh, how, like what are they scared by, you know? Like what kind of creatures and natural predators do they got? Well, persuasion check. <gasps> a disadvantage because they're trying to rob you and they don't know you. A giant salt shaker starts to lumber through the thorn trees. Persuasion? Mm -hmm. ah, 13. Okay. Well, this one seems to be scared of us. But I'm not a snail enthusiast myself. But Agden <clears throat> knows everything. You could come with us and meet him and ask him yourself. Could you tell us where Agden is? We can meet you there and continue this robbery. Again, we we are in quite a hurry. Yeah, yeah. I'm a goblin on the edge. On the edge of what? You don't want to find out. <clears throat> yes, he's rabbit. He's on the edge of uh, uh, gory uh, violence. Uh, uh, he's, 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 he's very interested in getting to his daughter as quickly as possible, and we intend to help him. So it's in everyone's best interest to... Lay down our our arms and 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 meet up later for to to continue whatever whatever robbery you want. Or maybe y'all can escort us there as your detainees. Oh yes, you could take us to the Slanty Towers. You surely must know the way. We are not headed to the Slanty Tower. Oh, <laughs> but we would receive you if a toll is paid at the Brigands' Tollway. Ha ha. Is that here? Are we at the Brigands' Tollway? Is, no. is that what we're doing here? You're at the Queen's Way. Oh. Is there another massive bridge called the Tollway? No. What is the Tollway? It's the place we take tolls. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, no robberies, but tolls. It's the place that gets in the oh, way so that you must pay a toll to get through. Is it between the Slanty Tower and where we are now? No. Mm. It's between the Slanty Tower and where you must go. Mm. Where must we go? Somewhere that isn't here. Then we are in agreement. No, thank thank you for your time. So we'll reschedule this yeah. to maybe uh, maybe next equivalent of uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> at about four o'clock sharp. <laughs> yes. We will meet you at Brigand's Tollway and we will let Agden know that you are coming. But we must take what we have come to take. Oh, come on. Let's rob these guys. No, no. Oh, it look. God, I'm itching. Come here, I'm feel itching feel for it, man. Ring. The second you lay a, 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 a pinky finger on one of these rabbits, you're going to be cursed. You, you, you're going to have four, four more wives. The, the witches, the coven rolled in, and now no laws matter, man. You heard her. She said it herself. Do you really want to be married to Greco? Married to everybody else. Please I'm not you. ready for commitment. Oh, <laughs> if you uh, if you punch one of these rabbit folk, then they, all of a sudden four lucky feet are just going to burst out in all directions, <laughs> and there's going to be a dead, feetless rabbit folk. <laughs> yeah, and we get to Prismere, we just slaughter a rabbit, establish dominance, nobody messes with us, man. We get to the Slanty Tower without incident. <laughs> Look, kid, I think I know what's going on. You just want to roll for initiative, don't you? <laughs> Look, would it make you happy? I'm just saying, I can't do anything else but punch people, man. 
Oh, fine. <laughs> Just, uh, I don't know. I'm talk going about it. I'm going to pick fighter class. <laughs> 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 that's what that's the one. Oh, just uh, all right. Just talk him out of it. I don't even know. <laughs> I take out one of my dice and I sort of like it floats in my hand and kind of like glows in a eldritch voodoo magic. Why don't you go ahead and roll for initiative, kid? Just go on. Let's see what you get. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You'd almost certainly be going first. That's Do nice. I- uh, we uh, we can't give you what you're asking for. I I, I just we we we're, we're no we can't. I mean, we go figure it out. It's a it's a fake riddle. Are we being detained? <laughs> <laughs> we cannot let you pass unless you give us what we're asking for. It's a but feeling. Agden Longscarf will be much obliged, and when you arrive at Brigand's Tollway, you will be. Greeted as guests, and not enemies. I don't want some Feywild gourd to mess with my gourd, and then suddenly we're feeling sad all the time because it's taken our feelings of happiness, and then we have to go and deal with whatever this uh, Agden Prince is. is that Agden just... Longscarf, Brigand Prince of Prismere! <sighs> okay, Crummy, if you would like to oblige, because the only feeling I have is uh, rave, rage and concern. Uh, how about you do it, and then we will pass. And otherwise, I'll say, Gideon, hit it. <laughs> and I'll be literal and not figurative this time. And but as, you, it, yeah. as you are saying this, you begin to hear a popping and a bubbling sound. And all of the rabbits immediately get to alert. And you watch as, though they are still eyeing you, they all begin to climb on top of the shell of this giant snail. Mm. Um, They are shouting things like, it's begun, it's happening. Um, Prepare, ready yourselves. (gasps) And they climb on top of the snail as your attention is drawn to these circular stone, um, that almost look like towers that you now realize dot the landscape and intervals throughout this swamp. And you realize that though they range in size from one foot, some all the way up to 10 foot, these look like Mario tunnels. Um, They are wells as they begin to bubble and spurt Mm. as swamp water begins to spill out of Ah. them. And what was a murky, wet ground is now beginning to turn into disgusting, fetid swamp water as it begins to rise and rise and rise. One foot, two foot, three foot, five. All of a sudden, you are swimming in this disgusting, murky water. All of the herringon are (laughs) atop the snail, and the snail begins to paddle, or it begins to move as it swims around you, still circling you, fast enough that you are unable to really get out of the circle that you're in, um, as they are still bearing down on you, asking for, for their gift. And you are going to deal with... Thank you, Derek for the help. Um, this, <laughs> this close to the water, um, bubbles, these iridescent bubbles begin to rise out. Um, they look almost like um, the shifting colors of an oil slick. And they're beautiful at first, the way they catch the light. And you're almost mesmerized by them as one of them pops. And you realize that it is filled with this murky swamp gas, this marsh gas. And as you breathe it in, all four of you are affected by the hiccuping gas. You experience the most annoying case of the hiccups. To cast a spell that has a verbal component, you must succeed on a constitution check to be able to cast it. You also have have disadvantage on all dexterity checks that are made going forward. Well, <laughs> no, no, it started. What? <laughs> this is very. Mm, uh, it's going to. Uh, 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 we need some sort of uh, taffy right away. <laughs> so, something has happened. <laughs> now, if you will just oblige us and give us what we ask, we will let you climb a- atop the snail, and we will take you to one of the well holes. 
and you'll be able to get yourselves out of this murk. And, and it can't just be entirely ver- ver- verbal. I mean, like you I simply can... need to touch the the opening to the gourd, the beautiful golden cap, and the gourd will work its magic. <laughs> And I don't have to say anything. I just touch the fucking magical gourd. Sure, why not? Do you do it? She she holds it out. Um, Grammy, <laughs> will, will, will this will this cure our hic- hic- hiccups? <laughs> Getting out of the fetid swamp, Will. <laughs> is that <clears throat> what the pot what the pipe is for? <clears throat> <clears throat> well, its rim is above the water. I touch the gourd. <laughs> you touch the gourd, and what is um, what is a memory of a gift that you've been given? Um, early on in our adventures, when it was just Kremi and Gid, uh, they would both smoke together. Kremi would smoke cigarettes, and Gideon would smoke cigars. And Kremi kept getting ashes on his soup. And uh, very thoughtfully of Gideon, he went out and found, uh, probably robbed some, like, rich, like, aristocrat lady of a nice long cigarette holder so that Kremi could smoke his cigarettes with uh, without getting uh, ashes on his nice suit. You touch the, um, the golden stopper on this gourd, and you feel it shift magically beneath your hand as it begins to rise and uncork from the bottle. And you immediately think back to this memory and the joy and the friendship that you felt in that moment that it was gifted to you, how thoughtful it was. And as you continue to think about it, that feeling of joy that you associated with that memory slowly disappears as the gourd takes that happiness in that moment away from you. You still have the memory, Uh, It still is something in your mind that you consider to be thoughtful. But when you think on it, you no longer have that fondness that you had before, that sense of friendship and that that feeling of a true connection between the two of you. It is now simply just a memory and a nice gesture. (laughs) You'll see that there's a large uh, hippocamp that's just swimming with a a, a, a green scaled uh, half horse. Uh, I need half-fish. you to roll a constitution, um, a constitution check. Oh, it's not a spell; it's a class feature. I'm still gonna make you do it. Okay, what, what I gotta do? Constitution. Uh, it's a constitution check. Oh, not a check. saving throw. Oh, check. Twenty-two. Uh, I'm gonna twist a dread. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> I it scared I me too. Scared. But then it'll be a natural twenty. Oh! oh! Yeah. So you you are able to turn into this thing, but as you do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, she Jebek reaches down and grabs your hand and pulls you onto the snail, and you immediately uh, feel the gas uh, expel from your lungs, and the the hiccups begin to stop, and you feel like yourself again. Oh. That was easy, fam. That was barely an inconvenience. <laughs> you don't feel eternal sadness or anything? No, I mean, just, I thought about some, like, memory of the past, and it's just sort of like some mundane thing that happened once. You didn't lose your memory of it? You no. I just thought about the time that you got me that kind of beat up, scratched up, like, cigarette holder, you know, that kind of stank uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, man. Well, that was pretty nice. Man, it wasn't I mean, beat up, scratched up. I don't know. It was top drawer. It was so the lady told me. It was. It's fine. You know, it, it works. It does. It does the trick, Gid. You know. Yeah. Well, I right. would like these hiccups to end. So, uh, <coughs> and to get out of here. Oh yeah. Defeated by hiccups. This is indeed a strange place, and I will place my hand on the gourd. And what memory do you think of? I have still in my possession a signal whistle. But it is very special to me, for it was carved by Gricko. Oh. And I remember it, when you gave it to me, uh, it was an, uh, to aid me in communicating with Hootsie, I realized that you uh, uh, were starting to view me as a friend, and that you trusted mm. me enough for that simple uh, gesture to um, uh, sort of be a part of your uh, clan. Uh, and it meant a lot to me. I um, hadn't had a friend like that before, so it was, brought me a great amount of joy. And it is a 
It's a, a what that does this? A signal whistle. Signal whistle. Sorry, I just have to write like it a, down. You know. Yeah. I just missed that Go part on. as I was listening to the story about Hootsie. Um, and you you do think of this. And it was the first time that you'd really connected with Gricko. And as you put your hand on the stopper, a very similar situation to what happened with Kremi happens to you. You don't lose the memory. But that feeling of closeness, that feeling of happiness fades from you as the gourd uh, takes it into itself. And you still look on that memory fondly it was still a moment of growth between you and Gricko, and it definitely has some valuable uses especially in your ability to communicate and work with a familiar that is so closely rooted to your group but that joy um that that sense of um that sense of true friendship and connection that disappears and you look on it more from an objective standpoint Mm. Um, but with that, Jepic does reach down and help pull you on top of the snail. And as this happens, the, the rabbits around you cheer and they clap you on the back and um, they they proclaim Agden Longscarf, the brigand prince of Prismere, um, is going to welcome you uh, joyously and happily into the brigand's tollway uh, as you feel that... Um, that swamp gas leave your lungs. The hiccups begin to subside, and you no longer feel that that um, that taint weighing you down that you'd felt when you were bobbing in the mire. Grammy, you are exactly right. Um, that wasn't just uh, uh, going to speed us along, but it was re almost refreshing. Uh, I feel like my mind is clear, and I'm able to push aside emotion, be able to focus on what really matters. Yeah, logic. exactly right. Gideon. Uh, We'll Gricko, if you want to get through this, uh, I, I uh, would uh, <coughs> say that you agree to this <laughs> robbery. Nothing bad happened? I feel clearer than ever. No, it's really not bad at all. It's not, I mean, there's, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of trick. It's just touch the thing. Okay, I'll, I'll touch it. Let's see what happens. A very similar situation, and what is it that you are reminded of? Um... I would say in a in a similar uh, vein, uh, very early on in the relationship between uh, Crummy and Gideon, uh, when I had first escaped uh, captivity and I was on the run, uh, I'd encountered Crummy, uh, and we we recognized a, a mutual benefit to to being together, but he was obviously very. Put together and I was soot covered and you know but like blasted clothes askew like you know scraggly hair rough beard um, and after about uh, a month or so of uh, traveling together Kremi uh, offered me a comb a sterling silver uh, comb uh, and said something fancy about, you know, giving me a haircut or something like that. Um, but, you know, we couldn't find a barber shop. So he gave me something to straighten my hair, clean my beard, uh, and just kind of dress it, dress it up a little bit more, you know. And that's the first time that anyone had ever freely given me anything. You think about this memory and you feel the gourd beneath your hand vibrate with this magical energy as you begin to change the way you view this. At first, it's these feelings of friendship. You're becoming a new man. Kremi seeing in you something no one had ever seen in you before. God, come on, music. Something no one had ever seen in you before. And this comb was a symbol of that, that you were no longer uh, enslaved. You were no longer used. You were your own man and you could present yourself exactly the way you wanted to. And Kremi saw in you more than even you had ever seen in yourself. And there was a sense of pride, a sense of joy, and a true sense of connection. But now, <clears throat> as you think about that comb, you think about the fact that Kremi is a dapper, uh, Alligator? What are you, crocodile? I can't remember. 
Are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah. Look, you have Briggsy too, and it's the same. So well, I'm an alligator. Okay. Uh, he's a dapper alligator, and he can't be seen in public with someone as disheveled as you were and as soot covered as you were. And it yeah. wasn't necessarily a gift of friendship, as it was a means to make sure that the two of you could work together in the way that you needed to work together to pull off your cons. And it was thoughtful, but it was useful. And really, that's what's important here. Mm. Yeah. Well, nothing weird about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, in, in some ways, it, it uh, uh, dashes the fog away from one's mind, allowing you to focus on fact. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, get, get up no, Yeah, we'll uh, grab, Oh, and grab. then, yes. Oh, she reaches <clears throat> down, quickly pulls you up, and you, too, feel that relief. <laughs> I am going to look, and you'll see this spectral hippocampus uh, in the water, and it'll look, and I'm just going to glare at the rabbits, and I'll just bolt, and then I'll hiccup, and I'm going to spin forward in the water, and I'll hiccup, and I'm just going to be spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll finally come up realizing that with the violent hiccuping and my uh, only my ability to only transform into aquatic swimming creatures just now, um, I will not be able to make it. So I am going to glare up at the rabbit and I'll cl- <laughs> 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 and I'm gonna put my hoof, uh, uh, hoof on the gourd. Uh, and do. what what memory do mm-hmm. you comes to mind? Uh, I will think back to childhood. Um, it would have been uh, the equivalent of Sunday uh, <laughs> at my hometown <laughs> with your enormous family, uh, and um, it was you know it was just at this point in my life. Uh, it was just me and uh, my mom, and it was the day that Uncle Glorbo was gonna come and cook. And every equivalent of Sunday day, he uh, he would come and he would cook for me and uh, and mom, and uh, I would always help him get all the ingredients. And it was always a joy. And Uncle Glorbo is the one who taught me how to use a sling, and uh, and just like throwing rocks and slinging rocks was how we hunted. And so um, I remember I was uh, waiting up, woke up at the crack of dawn and looked out the window waiting for Uncle Glorbo to show up. He showed up with all of his effects and we headed out into the bog. We uh, gathered a bunch of mushrooms, a bunch of uh, little bits and and bobbles and plants and things that Uncle Glorbo would know. He's also a master herbalist uh, (laughs) now in his very extravagant backstory. (laughs) Um, And uh, we uh, dug up some really nice, uh, nice tubers. Um, and then we went to the main course and with our slings ready, we, uh, found a burrow of big, big, uh, like monster swamp rats and we just massacred them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and we have a wonderful time. We bring them back. We clean them. We chop them up. We turn them into stew and uncle Glorbo, uh, has, uh, we have delicious rabbit stew that uncle Glorbo has made. Uh, and it's a very fond memory that I have. It's a memory of when you've been given a gift. The gift of, of rabbit stew. He taught, me how, he taught me how to use the slang. You feel an energy, but the memory that you're thinking of doesn't seem to meet the criteria. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Greco, this is mugwort. <laughs> and some chamomile. Oh, he also gave me my favorite ladle. Oi! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oi, here's a ladle. Ladle in it. And it has soup. In it. Uh, it has soup. Don't stop. It'll thicken. I will so think. I gotta fix this. I don't understand why it's being so awful. I will think until uh, it was after the meal. Uh, Mom had uh, finished cleaning up the 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 table, and it's just me and Uncle sorry, Glorbo, sorry, Jack. and um, we are talking. And he will have encouraged um, Gricko uh, to 
Um, yeah, I think that, that he knew, he heard from uh, my mom that I was uh, rebellious and I didn't want to be like just a normal goblin and I wanted, I really liked music and I wanted to, you know, go out and see the world, uh, basically the, the equivalent of a, of a rock band and an equivalent on a Sunday. And he said that he disagreed with my mom and that I should pursue it. And he gave me my first jaw harp. Uh, as you think of this new memory, um, well, eating rabbits. You <laughs> begin to feel the gourd uh, react to you. And you think about this memory, this familial memory, and one of the times that you connected with Uncle Glorbo. Um, and he truly saw you in a way that your mother couldn't. She was too close to you, and she wanted, she wanted things for you that she thought was best and didn't didn't take the time to think about what really was best for you, but Uncle Glorbo did. And yeah, he was Uncle Glorbo. he was able to see that who you were and what your needs were were different than other goblins. And even though it was not something he would normally gift, he went out of his way to procure this jaw harp for you and to give it to you. And that memory has always filled you with joy and the love of music. Uh, we're all intertwined in this. But as you think about it more, you begin to realize that you were a hyper kid. You were a little obnoxious sometimes. And uh, there were definitely times Uncle Glorbo got frustrated with you and you know, maybe that jaw harp wasn't this big um, moment of realization and understanding of you, but more a way to keep you amused and out of his hair. And that makes sense. I mean, that's reasonable. You were young and you were spunky and, you know, give a kid an iPad. Man, he didn't have much hair to begin with, so. And so <laughs> the, the memory still brings you joy. It still sparked your love of music, but that appreciation of a deeper understanding with your uncle Glorbo that is gone and it's more just something you're grateful for and I'll, I'll shift back from the spirit hippocampus into Gricko and I'll scramble up on top of the snail uh, she reaches down and that, a couple of them do as they help to pull you onto the um, onto the snail and you no longer feel that that need to hiccup as the <laughs> muck is washed away from you. I will say it's become very clear that though she has those memories now trapped in this gourd, they don't seem to have any um, sense of what those memories are. Okay. So it's not as if you've told your deepest secrets to a group of rabbits. Well, and that was painless, uh, Jebic. Are we trapped here, like on top of the snail? No. I will take, we will take you over to the top of that well over there, the 10 foot tall one, and you can stand there until the water recedes and make your way back to the ground and proceed on to Slanty Tower. Yeah, it's what's... simply a few jumps to the north. What's with all this water? Well, how often does this happen? It is random. Oh, great. Can you give us like some sort of breathing apparatus like, you know... One of those women's razors spray painted silver from the Phantom Menace that we yes. like stick in our mouths and you know breed just fine. What on earth are you talking about? What is jet. the Phantom Menace? <laughs> I myself do not appreciate a ghost. <laughs> Grico was hanging in the water. <laughs> He's not much of a swinger. Uh, a swinger? He's not much of a swinger. He's not ready for a commitment. He's not ready for a commitment, you know? He's not much of a swimmer. Unless he's transformed into a giant hooved seahorse. Oh, I love seahorses. It was worth asking. I mean, I guess we'll just wait. On the way uh, could you take us to Slanty Tower? We just wouldn't know what we're looking for if we saw it, you know? No, they said they're not going to Slanty Tower. They're, just gonna, a few they're not to going the in that direction. We yeah, have a few I... more errands we have to run. And I'd but... rather go just us, you know? So that your reunion is private with Ootsie. And I think that they said that the, it was kind of like a tower that was slanted a little bit. It's just <laughs> it a few is in the name. The north. I'm going to try it one more time. It's just a few hops to the north. 
and then a step to the left. You put your hands on your hips. And, 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 and they, they okay, were, okay. seem to really like what you're doing. You know, see, <laughs> most of them, they, they oh, get up and they it. start doing the thing with you and they catch on to the words It'll drive really quickly. You insane. <laughs> Let's do the mind beans again. And, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The mind warp. The mind warp. Oh, that would have been much better than mind beans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a missed That's opportunity. I just felt uh, inspired to sing after yeah. my hiccups went away. The uh, the shenanigans part of my brain is neutralized by pure sorrow and urgency. <laughs> so normally uh, but, what I would enjoy but such But it a is thing. with this that they um, they are oh. successful in um, in navigating the snail towards one of the rims of one of these we- the wells. And as they make their way to it, they help you dismount from the snail and uh, find your footing on top of the rim of this well. This well, You're now looking down into it, and you can see that the, the water is um, skimming over your feet. It is about level with this well. And as you look out over the swamp, you see uh, a few other wells out in the distance, but... Not as many as you'd seen before. Clearly, the varying heights of some of them, uh, many of them are submerged, but this is one of the tallest ones. Um, uh, But you do begin to see the bubbles popping as if the water is receding slowly back into it. Uh, The stone is mossy beneath your feet. It's a little slippery, uh, but you are able to find your footing as you all um, find your purchase on top of the rim of this well. And... Jebek reaches out her hand and shakes each of yours. Very kind robbery. It Thank was no. it was a pleasure to rob <clears throat> the four of you. Perhaps and we can return the favor sometime. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> All in the name of Agden Longscoff, the Brigand Prince, Prince of, of Prismere. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. And they all cheer and wave their flags. We are looking forward to seeing you at Brigand's Tollway. Oh yes, we'll... As friends! We'll be there. And so we don't have to pay the toll. Well, that will be determined upon entering the brigands' tollway. Well, and I'm just curious. The coven, they don't mind that he calls himself the Prince of Prismy, do they? Oh, that's a very cute shrug. Uh-huh. <laughs> he is what he is. <clears throat> All right. Good to know. Who you are can't be stopped. You are born just... As you is, are, is. Ah, yes. You're born just as you is. What is your snail's name? It has no name. What's his number? One. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. It's the only one we have. <laughs> oh. Snail number one. Wow. That's better than your snail, Greg. No, nothing is as good as snail number two, but. Mm. Do you want to name the snail? That. I feel like his name is snail number one. Snail number one, hey. <laughs> all of the all of the rabbits immediately say snail number one and then start singing along with you. I can't even help it. My shenanigans are coming out, but it's a serious business. My survival situations is overriding my love of shenanigans. <clears throat> is it, these are wells. Like yes. this is like literally like stone. Mm-hmm. I'm picturing and you're going to look down and yep. there's water in the bottom. But right now, the water is all the way up to the top of it. It's, it's basically like an infinity pool oh. is how it looks right now, where Ooh, the water is spilling yeah. out of it, but it's not raising higher than <clears throat> the, this well. But you, you know from looking before the water fully had risen that there were wells of varying sizes from one foot tall to this one, which is, um, as they've told you, 10 feet tall. <clears throat> um, and you can see the little bubbles that are kind of indicating that the water is beginning to flow back into the well, that it is going back from whence it came. Thank you, Jebbik. It was a pleasure to rob you. So we just wait, <coughs> and this will eventually go away? Yes. Out of curiosity, um, what do you do with the f- things you put in the gourd? Well... This was a gift to Agden from Bavlona Bright's, uh, Blightstraw. Oh. Wait, isn't that one of the hags? Wait! Was this fucking hag magic? Oh. Wait. Yeah. That makes, I will be tracks. giving it back <laughs> to... We're, we're so no. stupid. I will be giving it back to Agden as it is his prized possession. It's not often 
<gasps> that slack jawed Lorna gives out gifts. Slack jawed. Well, well, well. <laughs> you know, you, you I try to trust I one fucking hate time. To break it to you. But you let us in the prismere. Goodbye, friends. And you notice that the snail slowly begins to Goodbye, zoom rabbits. away. We'll see you. We'll and see you soon. They all begin to once again um, start to sing. With sticks and stones, we'll break your nose. We'll beat you blind and steal your clothes. And as they begin to sing, uh, and the snail swims away, the song of these rabbits begins to fade. And eventually... You are met with a sound of silence. The sounds of crickets. The sounds of the swamp. And a bubbling. As slowly, very slowly, the waters begin to recede. <clears throat> well, that's a deep subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because the water's kind of deep. Uh, yes, and this is a very large well. Mm. Frosty, I like how in times of crisis, when I lose my desire for shenanigans, you pick up the slack that I gave. That's why we're such a good friend. I agree. I agree. <laughs> we're, we're good. We, we work off each other well in stressful situations. <clears throat> you know, she's been missing like all night. Like I was like. Well, well, I know, but I only got my my memory back because the horrible delirium witch light bees. Would it help if, can't, can't you like blank his mind again, just to like temporarily, is that anything you can do? Yeah, if Otherwise, you could, if you'd like, I would take a hit of that calm emotions biz if you have it. <laughs> I mean, if you got it, I'd really like it. I, uh, you know, I, I might not even enjoy a shenanigan, but we should probably hurry. I can... Can you just like wave your hand and say, these are not the owl biz mm. you're looking for? I'm still working on it. I, I... I need to think about my spell mix. I took I took hold portal instead. <laughs> <laughs> I can close this door. I can close this door real hard. <laughs> no, he's getting through that door, but power. I can't calm my partner's emotions. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I can, can we just agree hmm. that when we show up in a crazy different land and a bunch of adorable woodland creatures want to <laughs> rob us, that we don't allow that to happen? You think we can fucking agree on that? Yeah. Especially when they're agents of a, of a coven of hags? Don't you think that they were going to actually attack us? What? What, what would we have done? Punch them! Punch them real hard! Yes, we would have to had to defend ourselves, and then there'd be a bunch of dead rabbits. And that, oh. that, that's what you want to do when you come what? into a land for the first time? Is immediately... Yeah. No, no, you want to no, get no. robbed by witches? I well, mean, I didn't think we were being... Uh, <laughs> We should have asked about the gourd's intent before the robbery. <laughs> we probably should have, oh, hey, is this actually a soul bag and the disguise of a gourd? <laughs> I'm still a little hazy and uh, uh, fatigued mentally well, at from, wasn't, from uh, the carnival. At least it wasn't Scabifer. Well, I don't feel that different, honestly. Like, I, I feel like maybe they're confused about the connection. Maybe he just thinks it's hag related and it's really not. Why would he lie about that? Well, I don't know. How would they even know? I guess if it's just... I mean, here's the thing. I feel like this long scarf fella, he's got to be opposed to the hags if he wants to be the brigand <clears throat> prince. But these hags, you know, are the, the, the rulers of Prismere. It could also have well, been a lie. Agden may have just told everyone that he got a gift uh, from one of the from one of the coven uh, hags to impress them uh, and to uh, cement his authority as prince. You know what? Oh, that'd be a good move. His that name is move. Agden, but we never asked him to spell it. What if the H is silent like uh, Herb? <laughs> Hagden. And it's oh, Agden. Oh, 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 God. Oh, a den of hags. Oh, jeez. Kremmy. Hagden. Kremmy, how many times have we been wandering in a sketchy town behind the Rats Casino and a guy's bunch of thugs come out and they, they're like, hey, give us all your electron pieces. And you're like, oh, is this a robbery? And then and then uh, they say, yeah. And then, and then Gideon would say, you mean a massacre? <laughs> and then there would be a massacre. For you. And they were just trying to steal a couple of electron pieces. This is the, the horrible egg magic and you just let them do it? No, it's completely different. Those thugs that jump out in the alley with knives. You know what they want to do? They want to cut our throats. They want some election pieces. They want to steal every possession we have. And we never stopped to ask them what they wanted to use hey, it for. Listen. 
What's that? Oh. <laughs> is that Samara from the bottom of the well? <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna die in seven days. <laughs> the moon is gonna crash into the planet in three nights. <laughs> Hello? <coughs> Hello? Hey, listen. Hello? Voice? We're listening. I'm right above you. And as you look up, you see a faint green ball of light <clears throat> that just <throat> darts this way and that. The sign, uh, the size of maybe a bottle cap. Uh, hello there, voice. And, oh, and yeah, careful, Frost! Careful, Frost! Well, what's this? That looks like a will o' wisp. My name's Willa. Willow the Wisp. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no, it's in the name. It's, it's the Willow Wisp. Wait, is that the, the spooky stories you were telling us about uh, in Ogway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People would follow these things and end up without souls or end up, you know, on the other side if you catch my drift. Who are you? Uh, my name is Morning Frost, and these are my companions. Uh, well, are you trying to steal souls? Do we Stay talk to her? I mean, should we, should we be telling it uh, his name? I mean, is it a soul snatched? It might be a weird question, Willa, but do you happen to be a Willa the Wisp of like a voodoo variety, or are you just more sort of like a whimsical, pleasant, kind, benevolent variety? Yes. That wasn't very clear. To be fair, she said she was a wisp, not a willow the wisp, and she is Willa the wisp I'm instead Willa, of a willow the, the wisp. The willow wisp. Oh, she is a willow wisp. Oh. I mean, I've heard that they could be. Look, this is. Oh, we are in a swamp. Oh fuck. Well, I you, think it's unrelated. You look like you need help. Listen how sweet this voice is. It couldn't possibly bring us any harm. Have you seen a very uh, sad owl bear and lonely? It's crashed into a tower that no. in a balloon. <laughs> do you know which way north is? Yes. Oh, do you know which way the slanty tower is? Yes. Oh, well. Uh, oh, uh, what does it look like? It's a tower that's slanting to the side. Got it. Okay. We won't miss it. <laughs> Are there any other towers that aren't slanty that we need to watch out for? Hmm. Well, when the wind's really heavy and I can see into the distance, there are beautiful towers on that old castle. Oh, so oh. we do have to watch oh. out for different towers and pick out the slanty one to know. Those ones aren't slanting. They point straight up to the sky. Okay. So we'll not go to those towers. We'll go to the slanty towers. Well, and there's only one slanting tower. There aren't like multiple slanting towers, but only one of them is the slanty tower. Yeah, like the slant tower. The slanty tower. <laughs> oh, the which, crooked tower. Which way yeah. should we go to follow you, The Willa? slant obelisk. You, you know. can't follow me. Oh. oh. We can't? <sighs> <sighs> Now do we have to get Willis Mojo back? <laughs> I can't go more than ten feet from this well. Oh. Well, can you just give us the directions then? We'll be on our way. <laughs> <laughs> just head to the north. Yeah, we already got the directions. Oh. I mean, I, wait a we... minute. Willa, were you always a glowing ball of light? No. When Pavlorna made hither and decided to drown the land with the wells. She drowned me too. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you at the bottom now, of the well. And now I'm stuck here, tied to this well, never able to leave. I almost guessed it by accident by making a reference to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did guess it. <laughs> Some of the other wells... <sighs> they have multiple will o wisps, so they don't get lonely. But it's just me. <clears throat> oh, um, man, that's a that's a bum deal, Willem. Uh, is there anything we can do to help? While we're here, we're sort of like in the area, you know. We we got some time to kill, I guess. Just are you a friend to Bevelorna? No, no, no. no. Good. Or her straw. Good. <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just... Don't 
don't end up like me, okay? I'm already feeling kind of bummed out, Will. And, <laughs> and if you can, if, if it's not too much to ask, mm. if you meet her, avenge us. Like, kill her. Well, I'm not a fan of death, having experienced it myself. Oh, I don't really, I uh, mean... Uh, we got it. We're gonna kill it. It's, it's okay. We'll we'll, have, we'll we'll interpret your call for vengeance to kill it. Just a thing. Thank goodness. No, we was there. What you guys would think like we avenging her was like solving her puzzle or something, and then it's all good. I don't think that's probably an option. <laughs> We'll, we'll convince her to free all of the spirits, or if we not, then uh, Gideon can punch real hard. Yeah, uh, she can free us. Oh, but if you can, if you can avenge us, and eventually, I don't know, maybe rescue Zabelna. If Zabelna were back, it wouldn't be like this. Mm. Oh, none of it would be like this. Why don't we and just... as she begins to cry, you can see tears, these Ooh. glowing, luminescent tears as they fall from this little floating orb and splash into the muck. You begin to see the trees that are towering over you. Um, their branches were reaching up towards the sky, but the more sad she gets, the more the Feywild shapes around you, and these trees begin to bend towards the water. And where once were mangrove trees are now weeping willows. And as she cries, the trees seem to mirror her emotions. Well, well, hey, uh, are you you, like tied to the well or you have some kind of relic in there that might be able to like like, take you out, put you in a different well with a bunch of other you know, wispy friends. I can't go more than ten feet from this well. Are you sure? We might be able to dig up your corpse and put yeah, it into get another... your bones. Yeah, like, we get your bones. scoop all your bones up and move your bones. It's, it's, it's probably bones. not the well. It's it's probably your skeleton that's down there that you can't get more than ten feet away from. Yeah, we could try. If you want, we can try. Oh, I feel bad. Really Listen to the, sad, look at the, look at the, tears. The, the, the trees are crying. They're 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 sad too. Don't you feel any any emotion? Uh, my paternal I instinct just, is kicking in. <laughs> I just need you to promise that you will avenge us. Oh, we will. If oh, we yeah. help you, you'll help us. Well, we're interpreting it as murdering that through her, but yeah, that's fun. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. we're definitely yeah. gonna save she, the bill and kill the hags. You. You see as her orb of light glows for a second and expands. And the trees, as they are bowed over weeping, begin to start to right themselves. They're not fully reaching towards the sky the way they were before, but they're no longer full weeping willows. They seem to be this strange mix of weeping willows and mangrove trees. Mm. As some chipperness returns to her and she begins to spin in circles as she slowly moves towards you first, Frost and you feel the weight of her... Why? Phone hungry. (laughs) (laughs) You feel feel the weight of her her tiny will-o'-wisp-like body. Um, There is a little bit of, of temperature to her. It's cold, the cold of death. But you can sense just in the air around her, that this entity, though contrary to what you know about will-o'-wisps, is good, is kind. And you feel your body infused with a boon. And she moves from each of you, just alighting on your nose for a second before flying to the next, as she grants you the boon of will-o'-the-wisp. Oh, shit. The boons recipient gains a d4 and can at any time within the next 24 hours roll this die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw made by it. Can you say that one more time? You get a d4 that you can roll at any point. That's like the 24 hour blast. It's 24 hour blast. 
Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Willa. And it looks like the water's receding. Head to the north through the mangrove trees. Should the moving mound block your path, simply go around it. Okay. That's and if you path. smell the stew at the inn, and it moves towards you on its gnarled legs, go in and say hello and get the rest you need. Okay. <laughs> moving around the mound. And what right. was the, the we, stew? There's going to be an inn that is going to walk towards us on legs. Yeah, we oh. got to say hi to it. Walking in oh. and eat its soup. Um, mm. Are you sure we can't, like, bring your bones to another well? Yeah. I don't think mm. my bones have been in this well for a long time. Mm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, maybe swim like around down there and just check, see, we'll see what's down there. Yeah. And perhaps some sort of uh, personal artifact or object that you're bound to? Like yeah, a pendant? Yeah. Uh, were you wearing anything special? No. Oh! Well, you yeah, like a skull, like in uh, Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. The ancient fable. <clears throat> well... I am going to look... I can't believe I'm saying this, but my paternal instinct is very conflicted right now, and my brain's about to short out. <laughs> we're, we're just going to try real quick. Uh, Willa, you did say something very important that I want to unpack as Gricko does this. Okay, I am going to, if I start screaming, I don't even know, just something bad's down there. <laughs> How far down is the water level going at this point? Uh, about three feet. Oh, okay. oh. Well, that's not bad. Uh, I don't know if I have any... So just dive into the seven foot deep water and feel around for bones in the pitch black of this well, Gringo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simple, man. Find her lovely bones. <laughs> hey, I understood that reference. Oh, I have just the, the trick. <laughs> and I'm going to turn into a um, a spectral version of an, an onkeg, which is like a like a giant burrowing insect. Nice. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, skitter down the uh, walls and just start scooping out with my claws. Uh, you skitter down the, the three feet of a uh, stone wall until you make it to the um, to the murky water. It is green and filled with floating bits of algae and um, insects uh, fly around on top of it. Strange insects, unlike uh, anything you'd ever seen. Uh, as you enter into the water. In the water of the well. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to go down and what? try to dig around as 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 quiet as as gently and respectfully as I can, presuming like thinking there's going to be a skull or a locket or a doll or something down you here. You swim down seven feet. Um, I need you to roll a d8 for me, please. Oh, I should have done a swimming creature. <laughs> well, this is where you touch my secret bones. The bear can die. <laughs> I warned you. Four, four. Uh, I told you not to search the world. <laughs> you, you begin to swim down through the water, and it is difficult to see. This water is incredibly murky and filled with silt. Um, but you do notice that those same uh, oil slick-like bubbles are present here as well. And as you are swimming through this, uh, part of your, um, what had been your hand, but is now some kind of bug appendage, uh, pops one of those bubbles and you catch yourself hiccuping underwater. And as you do, you swallow um, huge mouthfuls of this of disgusting, bones. salty, earthy water. Um, and it hits your stomach like a, um, like putrid milk, which knowing you, you probably enjoy. Um, <laughs> but you do feel like your time down here is, is shortened with every hiccup you swallow and breathe in some of this water. You swim down seven feet, eight feet, 
nine feet, 10 feet, 11 feet. And there is still no floor to this. Though you do feel this tube or tunnel shift. It's not going straight down. It begins to angle out as if it connects somewhere else. And you imagine that you would have to swim for a significant amount of time to find any kind of bottom to this well. Um, as the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog drowning music plays, sewer surfing. Uh, I will, I will uh, so rock it back to the top and skitter out of the. I'll look like a. A sand crab covered in uh, in filthy goo, mm. and I'm going to immediately. It's obviously a spectral spirit version. I will shift back into Greco and. <gasps> oh, it's like pipes. It's pipes. It's not a well. It's pipes. And I'm glad you're back up here. For a moment, I was worried that there was going to be a small spectral Greco voice suddenly joining. Um, I need you to. I need you to roll a d8 for me, please. Wait, me? Mm-hmm. Uh, an eight. Oh. You. You get up to the top and you begin to say this, but you're still hiccuping uh, as that that same um, that same marsh gas affects you in a similar way when you had been with the heron gone. Um, and as you let out one of these hiccups, a oil slick metallic bubble pops from your mouth and explodes and you feel your eyes begin to roll back in your head as dizziness overcomes you. You feel lightheaded. You feel like you are beginning to see something. And with your eyes wide open, staring down directly into the water of the well, a vision begins to form. What was your number? Uh, Eight. Rows upon rows of severed bullywug heads, all impaled on spikes, and they all chatter at each other. You watch this. It looks like it's happening almost in real time, as if you are overhead watching, watching this, experiencing this. And just as you see it, the water begins to lower even more, and the vision begins to to ripple and fade. Y'all right? Yep. Yep, 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 Pause a pipe. Oh, no. I told you they were like Mario fight. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Pierre! Oh, the Pierre! Oh, the Pierre! Oh, there are so many Pierres! Oh, God! Oh, Krimi, Krimi, is it, is it, yeah. is it can Mr. Guru follow us? Why are you asking? No, isn't you see all of the, the Bollywood heads down there? They, they're, they're chattering and singing, but I can't understand what they're saying. The fuck are you talking about, Griko? And I'm going to look down. Do I see anything? <sighs> I don't see a damn thing. There's nothing down there, man. Is this the water? It's just a horror vision. <laughs> And I would like you all <gasps> to roll on the naughty table. What? Yeah. I didn't even say the naughty thing I've been thinking this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it now. I, I want to add a little bit of chaos into this. And well, see it's very important. I need to ask you, do you have a cousin whose name rhymes with yours? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you're rolling a d20. Yep. Oh, oh, shit. 15. I'm keeping my... <laughs> Grico, you see this vision and as you as you mention Pierre, you hiccup and swallow another gulp of this fetid water. And as you do, you feel the life leave your body as you immediately die and are reincarnated. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you just fall into the well? Pierre! Don't fucking joke about Guru! He's You understand? Oh, the food of man! He got me! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, Grego! Uh, hey, is he okay? We need to fucking leave. And oh I start looking over my shoulder. And you I look get for a, shadows. And you get a? Oh, uh, five. Get a? <laughs> <laughs> you can only speak in song. Pretty good, yeah, actually. <laughs> Oh fuck, we should really go now. Oh fuck, we should really go now. Please, please, can we really go now? Now's not the time to sing. Look what happened to Grigo. He's and floating in the water. He's fucking dead, man. 
your entire mouth is numb and you cannot stop drooling. <laughs> uh oh. 17. You turn into a feral tabaxi and you feel the need to mark your territory. <laughs> uh oh. I mean, he's fucking dead. He's fucking. <laughs> 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 what happened to you? Oh god. Oh man. Oh, what's this feeling? Oh, I just got a. Oh. 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 He's got this feeling. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, god. Are you feeling alright, dude? No, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real good. Well, we're, we're sorry. We're sorry for the serving of sacred pounds. Oh, so, uh, 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 should oh. I should I roll this publicly? Yes, you should. <laughs> I don't. So I don't know why I'm peeing on you. I propose that re- I propose you re-roll uh, repeat. Yeah, but. if you get a goblin, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I just rolled for myself and it was goblin. Oh. <laughs> Everything worked out better than it took me out. Nope. I don't know. 37. 31. 31. Oh. <laughs> I need to roll a d6. Uh, okay. <laughs> I love chat. They're like, that is not being. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Uh, you will see as I'm... I go, <laughs> you were covered in pee. You had fallen into the well. <laughs> and Gideon, <laughs> overcome with the feral nature of his new tabaxi form, did fun. choose to mark his <laughs> territory, and you were unfortunately in the way. And he's, So he's an actual tabaxi He's right an now. actual tabaxi. You are a fiery red tabaxi. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I must do, and I think I have the strength to do it. What are you doing? Uh, the Don't do it. Don't stop marking him. Sits it on our dance floor. He has to know. He loves firewood. He has to know. What do you have to teach oh. him? <laughs> <laughs> Take notes, Gregor. Take notes. <laughs> you will see as my goblin skin will turn from uh, green and my ears will shrink. I'll stay about the same size. And uh, my hair will go from blonde to like a, a, a grayish white and kind of I'll be crazy. And I'll shrink. My nose will shrink back in as I turn into a rock gnome. <laughs> Oh, no. As I all go. <laughs> hey! Hey! Hey, stop pissing on me! Hey, stop pissing me off, you Ah, go! He can't stop us. So so hey, I can't stop us. Hey. Overwhelming urge. Oh. You have to aim right for his face. I didn't oh. have to until the DM told God, me I had to. <laughs> Now I just got a marker. I guess I went to hell of all places. I come to you and my mouth is full of cat piss. <laughs> it smells horrible. Yeah, it's that like ammonia, like yeah, it tastes yeah. even worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not just cat piss. Get your froth. Ah, froth. Oh, you're you're, you're <laughs> pit boarding him. <laughs> Gosh, he had like a big girl there. <laughs> Did you have a big girl? Oh God, more. Is it weird? Is it weirder that I'm still doing it, or is it weirder that he's come to life and hasn't moved? <laughs> hey, stop! stop. <laughs> hey, ah, oh, oh, oh. Not again! Oh my god! I don't want to get pissed! Gosh, if I, if I had a, a certain electric piece for every time I woke up in the world getting me stuck by a tradition, I had two electric pieces, which is a lot as weird as half a try. <laughs> Uh, 
Just once, I'd like to get to a session without piss. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have ice bound for. Yeah. Oh. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we had a piss on an ice bound. Too. Well, I'll, I'll scramble out. Time. Well, gosh, it's my old friend Frosty. <laughs> Yeah, well, gosh, I'm. Is that you? Yeah, I'm feeling like we gotta save Hootsie. <laughs> yeah, what happened? What happened here? Hey, is that Gideon? <laughs> yeah. Gosh! Uh, yeah, it's me! Gosh! Tom Pell, I love to piss on things. <laughs> I don't love to piss on things, I just have to piss on things. So you don't even enjoy it? Hey, I don't even care. Now that you're a cat, he's a cat. You know, you know my friends up back home always called me Whiskers. <laughs> Because I'm curious like a cat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. So why I'm going to call you Whiskers. Oh, well. Because you're a cat bear. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I just have to listen. I, I can't tell the difference between the two of you. What if you should wear a hat or something? <laughs> I got giant chains hanging from my arms. You can't tell the difference between us? I don't know, I've sloughed off my mortal coil and just come to. <laughs> That's fair. My mortal flesh has been resurrected, uh. like they say in the good book. <laughs> this is bad. We're not on call anymore. What? 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 Fuck like this. Oh, did, oh, I guess the piss got frosty too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, yeah. He must be allergic. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely coming out of the velocity that uh, created the splash zone and everybody was involved. What else could have wood like this, you understand? No! <laughs> what? We could have wood like this. <laughs> well, gosh. You know what? Man, as soon as we got to the Feywild things, we really got out of hand. Forever. <laughs> Our souls were stolen by a bunch of plucky rabbits with very adorable combat animation. <laughs> We were just about to... Mm, mm, and yeah, I died! Yeah, yeah. It's important that I ask you a question, Will. Yeah? You can understand what he's saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. You don't know. You talked about how he's a big boy with the past. Can, can you unpack that, brother? The boomer? The boomer. The boomer. The boomer. The boomer. The... The. <laughs> the. 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 Frosty, you spit it out already. We gotta save Hootsie, my dog. I'm popping. I'm popping. Hey, Willow, we're really awfully sad about your really depressing situation. I don't know. But it's our fearless leader, Crummy, would say we gotta get away from this depressing kid. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh my No, I speak Frosty very plainly. Ask about the boma. He would like some vanilla ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a point where I wanted to help you Did quite I... a bit, but now I just want to go pee on that tree, so I think we got to get out of here. I'll take out a piece of parchment. All right. Ask how Zabilna is in danger and what else she knows. Somebody. Oh. Somebody, please. Oh, oh, that's what you meant, Frosty. Hey, Will, I have a question for you. Okay. If you can choose to be freed from your horrible fate <laughs> and avenge and be reunited with all of the ghost kids or get eaten by a giant spider, what would you choose? Well, I would choose to, to undo my fate and be reunited with all of the other wallowists. Oh, thank gosh. I thought you were going to pick the giant spider. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Is that what he wrote down? Wait a minute. Willa, can I speak <clears throat> to you like this? Who is that? It's Frost. I'm speaking to you with my mind because my mouth has been numbed somehow and I can't make myself understood. Do you want me to fix that for you? Oh, I would love that very much. Yes, please. Okay. Can, can you do, do that? Sure, why didn't you ask sooner? Well, okay, because well, it's like it. Huh? Because it would have sounded like... You, you, you understand my point. And she flies down, and she hovers right in front of your mouth. And you can hear a strange incantation of words. 
and you immediately begin to feel the feeling come back to your lips and your tongue, and you are covered in drool. It is drool and piss. And piss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yeah. But you are once again able to talk. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Willa. Uh, she can she can cure what ails us. I think at least she was able to unnumify my mouth. But good. <laughs> That's real nice to hear, Frosty. <laughs> but I, I'm just I'm just so grateful she didn't pick the giant spider. <laughs> yeah. Of all the people to cure first, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to dodge out of the way. I sit down on the edge of the well and I look at the swamp around me. I pull out my Grig fiddle. I start playing. <laughs> wow, there's so many scenes about pissing <laughs> and pissing on other guys. That's a very good question, Kremi, though I'm not sure why you feel compelled to say, oh, oh. perhaps we were magically cursed in some way. Uh, would you be able to help my friend Kremi? I believe he's probably singing inappropriately and nonstop. Yeah, I'm capable. One day they'll find it, the yellow connection. <laughs> it's just one color. Yeah. <laughs> Thank gosh it's not two. Do you know I was why worried. This, do you know why this happens? Why why, why we might be uh, uh, occasionally um, swept up by fame magic and, and made to do things we don't want to <clears throat> or understand? I think it's... Something in your soul. Hmm. Well, that's awfully kind of you. <laughs> anyway, bye. <laughs> we gotta go to the Crooked Tower, can, folks. Can, can you cure Slanty our Slanty Tower? Oh, sorry. We gotta go to the upright, straight as an arrow tower. No, we're going to the Slanty Tower. Gosh. <laughs> You just stand what does right it look there. like? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tower that's slanty. Oh. Well, why did you just say so? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. I should have just Why are you said speaking it. in riddles? <laughs> I think it's a fey thing. <laughs> I continue to pee on everything. <laughs> As soon as you start to pee again, I just mage hand your penis up and so that it hits you right in the fucking face. It's like a, it, it's like a water park. It's a penis. geyser. I'm, I'm tired of getting pissed on. It's coming up and just tired. spreading out like a bomb tree. Use my mind powers it's like to make all, you pee yourself. It's like we're all caught in the rain. That's a nightmare. It's like pee into back seas. Uh, <laughs> getting caught in your in. Uh, that's good. That's Thank very you. good. Could How's you your please mage hand so supple? Cure us. I'll give you five gold pieces. Ooh. I have What's you gonna do? She's gold. dead. Oh, but if you would like me to fix your sinking, I can. That would be nice. And she floats down next to your mouth, and <gasps> you hear her uh, once again say a small incantation, and um, you feel that need to sing uh, leave you. Oh, thank God. I love songs about cheating on your girlfriend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially with a stranger out of the newspaper. God, that song's about Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. No one really listens to the lyrics. It's kind of a weird song to write about, you know? It's always about romantic trips on the beach. Or little does she may know, it's, they're going to get fucked by someone from the newspaper. <laughs> like a journalist? It's quite a twist. <laughs> No, I think like he means like a classified ad. Oh, I thought he meant like from the newspaper, like a representative. Well, it could be, you don't know. Yeah, like the editor-in-chief. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like a beat reporter that's like desperate for the next story, a you know? A cheat reporter, perhaps. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, or just like a photographer. Imagine that, you know? Not <laughs> even a reporter. And, and you would have a camera. That's even more exciting. Oh, oh gosh. Like tripod. Or like the, or like the local food blogger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank goodness they're not photographing this. Man. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I've about rubbed this dry, no pun intended. <laughs> me, me, uh, two. 
I think he's almost out of piss. You better do this now. <laughs> get, in my mouth, Willa, get in my mouth, please. What for? So you can cure me of peeing on stuff. You want me to fix your nature? Say it. Say it. Yes. Yeah. You yes. want me to stop you from yeah, pissing already. on everything? <laughs> on everything, on my friends, on myself, in this well. Sorry I peed on you. He's a giant pissing cat. Yeah. Who hates the equivalent of Monday? <laughs> Okay, I'll help you. And she flies over to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. Sorry, sorry, yeah, 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 Garfulu lasagna. Yeah, 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 Garfulu lasagna. Mon- what was it? Mondays will die. Oh, and it's strange eels, even Mondays may die. You know? Oh, why must I recount this? Why do you sound like Torben? Oh, no. oh, why must I kill Mondays? And as you do this, she um, she flies around you, and you begin to feel the need to piss ebb away as oh. your fur falls away, and you are once again Gideon Cole. And then you shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh! I fucking hate this place. <laughs> hey, be all right. We got hey. robbed by rabbits, and I've pissed on everybody. Gosh, Gideon, it's good to see you back. I'm like looking over you, like to the top. I'm not really making like. <laughs> we've been here for ten minutes. We're covered in piss, and we've been robbed by adorable woodland creatures. So, well, press the digitation. Gosh, now I, now I know you're really not living for the weekend. You're feeling very dehydrated. <laughs> oh God, I need something to drink. Oh. Get no, it. I have a no, question no. for you. If, yeah. if you could choose between drinking a whole pitcher of tall, cool Budweiser <laughs> or losing both of your legs in a terrible train accident, <laughs> which would you choose? Well, well, that's a tough one, but I think I'd go with the tall, cool pitcher of Budweiser, you fucking psycho. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you were going to go with the train accident. Why would you think I would go with the train accident? I guess I'm just a worrier. Oh, my God. Can you that- cure whatever the fuck? His psychotic thing is? That's why my friends yes. call me Whiskey. <laughs> I'm just a worry. I think he died and lost 85% of his brain or something. Yeah, is that so what his curse let's was? Let's hope that's not permanent. It would seem so. <clears throat> oh. Is that really true? You yeah, well, I mean, I, I, mean I did lose a lot of oxygen to the brain, <laughs> drowning it very slowly, without anyone even lending me a hand. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, can you try pulling one of your teeth out? Oh, hold on. Oh, fuck! <laughs> can, you, can you put it back in? Oh, fuck! Oh, Come yeah. down, everything tastes like iron. <laughs> That's just blood. Can you please fix him, too? I can't, I'm capable, yeah. Will you, please? Could, may you? Oh, it's one of those may things. May you, please? Would you kindly? Say would you well, kindly. Get her to fucking do it. To say will you kindly or something. I, I can. All right, stand, stand up. May, may you you can go ahead now, like presently. Like, Open like your currently. mouth, man. That's the key. Oh yeah, no, I was already doing that. <laughs> she seems to watch you quizzically, but she doesn't make any move to cure Greco. <sighs> man, you know, after all of that, all over me, I feel like we're off to see the wizard. <laughs> you know what I mean? We do, actually. Hey, Will. <laughs> yeah. Will you or won't you? Anyway, anyway, can you please fix my brain? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With you asking to be oh, cured, gosh. she flies over to you and she begins to utter the incantation and you feel your body begin to change. Your skin becomes that a shade of green that you're all so fond of. Your hair becomes that beautiful blonde. Oh, gosh. And your voice returns to its nor- normal timbre. Oh, down, down to Goblin Town. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. What the hell? That was so good. Oh, <laughs> oh, Holy shit. Well, that was amazing. <laughs> well done. Welcome back, Rigo. Do you feel better? Remind me to never hang out with gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are a strange creature. Uh, they are strange creatures. <clears throat> Can I ask what it was like? 
Like, oh, to die? Yeah, like no, I think you mean die. getting pissed on. No, no, <laughs> no. Please, <laughs> me and Rich were trying to fuck up about all the pissing. I, I listen. It wasn't my fault. I'm still pressed to digitation and all the piss off of everything and everyone. Oh, is oh is Toolbag back? <laughs> <laughs> that was all Gideon. He transformed into a feral tabaxi. I've never seen that much urine in my life. I didn't like the feeling. I hated Mondays. I was praising an elder whore. Well, I didn't like the feeling I am. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's good to be back in the shadow. <laughs> Let's go. We'll, uh, we have been Carnival the Crew. We will avenge you and all of your uh, depressing uh, murdered children friends. And we got an, an owl bear that's also my daughter to say. We do have that. Thank yeah. you. Will we swear this to you? We're going to make a fight pact. We will avenge you. That makes me really happy. Can you tell me what you know about Zabilna before we make our way? Just that she's not here anymore. She's here, <clears throat> but I can't feel her the way we, the way I used to. Hmm. Okay. Something is, something is wrong. Hmm. We suspect that. Uh, it's part of the reason we're here, and perhaps we will be able to avenge you. Will. <clears throat> if you can make your way to the Palace of Hearts Delight, maybe you'll find answers there. Ooh, delight! Is that where the castle is? The big castle? Yes. That's somewhere around here. The palace. Oh. At the very center of Prismia, <clears throat> you can take the Queen's Way directly to it. No, the oh. Queen's Way is broken. Oh. The Queen's Way is broken? Yes. Unfortunately, oh, no. the bridge is cracked in many areas. Uh, I'm sorry to sadden you, but oh. it's the truth. It's going to be much more difficult to get to the palace without the Queen's Way. Do you think killing a few hags might help with that? <laughs> I'm not a fan of murder. Too late. Someone who's died before. Too late. But if you could... Nullify their power. Well, it usually then that comes with help. killing them. Too. Yeah, yeah, and in the lives. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or if we can take their power away and and make them harmless, then they'll just be slack jawed, whatever, and uh, slack jawed Lorna. You, you yes. want to make a bunch of vegetables of all the hags? Yeah, this wouldn't be the first campaign where I've done that to one of the big bads. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than killing them. I'd rather not see that happen. Wait, Frosty, again. do you want us to go up to eat, eat Switch and go do this and say, I've taken away your magic. You won't hurt anyone ever again because we're rated Y7. Yes, especially if it means that, especially if it means that Slack John Lord is voiced by Mark Hamill. I'm there for it. Well, I don't know how to do that. And I don't see any giant uh, Deus Ex mocking the dragon turtles around, uh, do you? Mark Lion Hamill. turtles. Best friend Mark Hamill. Yeah, uh, we've got slack jawed Lorna. Uh, I was wondering if you could come voice her for us. Great. Yeah, he'll be here next session. Mark well, Hamill, everybody. Shit. Oh my god. We're going to have to learn how to spirit bend. Oh, I'm sorry. His name is Hark Mammal. Hark Mammal? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, he's not as good, but. <laughs> <laughs> he gets the job done. <laughs> Hawk! He'll do no. it. He'll do it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, uh, Willa. Um, the only parting words I have is, you know, you are stuck alone here, and that is, I'm sure, yes. very sad. However, the people that you know at the other wells who are stuck with each other, they may not even like each other very much. Perhaps they're stuck in eternity with some bitch, and you, need, <laughs> <laughs> and you have the ability to enjoy your loneliness when you're not feeling a little down. Perhaps relish on that thought. Okay. I tried. You're just making it worse, Frost. Let's go. All right. I wouldn't say it's worse. Would you say it's better? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's better. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's go. Okay, yeah. we will avenge you. Avengers! <laughs> you know, that was my line earlier. And, and you do that. You move your arms, and you realize that you are looking out at... A swamp that is no longer covered in uh, murky water, but you are ten feet above the ground with no steps to get you down. Oh, we can jump down, perhaps. Well, ten feet's not that far. No, it's not at all. Let's see who can twist their ankle the least. <laughs> 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 I 
I would like you all to roll dexterity saving throws. I will please. try to gingerly let myself down. I'm rolling hot tonight. Oh, wow. That's fucking good. 22 for old uh-huh. Grico Grim Graham. Dex saving throw? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 22. How many, how many is a twist? Yeah, I'm going to dread it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I got a nine. My 12. backpack is full. I have 89 pounds of backpack on me. <laughs> <laughs> you you gingerly climb down and um and you are able to make your you're able to make your way um down the well, Crummy. It is slick, it is mossy, but you're familiar with swamp areas. This isn't anything that is out of the norm for you, and you have your alligator appendages that give you a little bit of extra um, dexterity as you make your way to the to the floor. Gricko, you leap wantonly off of the <coughs> off of the well, and your small goblin body um, hits a pat a patch of moss, and you bounce and do a uh, goblin roll. Um, as you uh, <laughs> jump to your feet. Uh, Gr- uh, Gideon and Frost, you watch as your friends are able to to make their way uh, quickly to the bottom. And you look at each other and you nod. And as you both jump, you collide with each other. Oh, uh, and well. you slam into the side of the well oh, and tumble fuck. down as you hit the ground feet first on a big mossy stone. Oh! <laughs> my legs! Oh, my fucking legs! Frost. I'm contractually obligated. Both of your legs break. Oh my god! As you impact. Holy shit. Um, let's see if I can do this. One of your bones is sticking oh! out of the side, blood mingling with the fetid water. As Gideon, you land on top of him. Though your legs don't break, the bone that's sticking out of Frost's leg does pierce into your flesh. Oh! And a large gash appears uh, right around your hip groin area. You've been boned. <laughs> ah, he boned me right the groin. Ah, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> Gideon, get off of me without moving as much as possible. No, I can't. Oh I my even... god, my fucking legs. Ah, 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 I'm fucking glued to you. Glued. I'm gonna you, be sick. You're stuck into my groin. I can't wear a test with the groin. I'm uh, contractually out I can feel you everything, uh, Gideon. Uh, I can uh, feel my bones. <laughs> yeah, you can. Sorry, this fucking hurts. I didn't mean it. Somebody ah, get Gideon off of me. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm a tricky. Come on. And you're oh, going I hope to, you, you you're know. each going to take. Five points of piercing damage. That's it, Jesus. Oh my yeah. God. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> Greg, I'll fix him. Oh no. I'm I'm a trained healer. I'm a trained healer. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's mm, good. You gotta finish it. You gotta finish it or it doesn't work. <laughs> this is just a regular banana. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> this doesn't kill me at all. My legs are still broken. <laughs> And, I, and they, uh, a large spectral ground is going to appear above me and uh, bang on some uh, large wooden stumps and uh, a giant magical thing of bananas uh, will appear. That's fucked up. Uh, okay, uh, let me just split this split this bunch. Oh, take your fucking time and just fold it in half like a damn lawn chair. Remy, pull, pull, get in hot. Uh. Again, come on, please. You pull Gideon off. Ah! Bone is removed from Gideon's abdomen. Ah, the uh, the artery that was, that was being uh, compressed <laughs> is released as blood begins to just splurt everywhere. Wow. Gideon, splurt so much liquid An additional my two points of damage. Oh, that looks like a seven banana. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, that's an artery, Gideon. 
I, I whip my belt off. <laughs> this calls for a tourniquet. <laughs> Don't touch me. You got to take yeah, your pants okay. off. Okay, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. You I'm gonna take, take my pants off. off. No, Do you even know where this off. wound is? Oh God. <laughs> Would you rather die? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, fine. Hey, Take those pants good. off, you. God, this is weird. Fucking prison here. <laughs> I hate this fucking place. I'm punching through the groin. I don't okay. know, Frosty. Uh, ten fucking feet just, in the air, damn it. Just, just a few more, Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh. you, do, you eat them, but your legs are still pushed like this as they fuse together in that position. Oh, no. <laughs> Ideally, as this happens, I'm going to use my uh, wild shape as the uh, big spectral gorilla that's going to give me my healing aura. And I'm thinking of like a, a massage therapist. He's like grabbing the, the gorillas using its four arms. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're building a lot of tension in your shoulder. <laughs> that's, where I, that's where I hold my tension. Oh, mm, banana. Banana. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta get this as high as possible. You're able to get your legs straight. Okay. So, my uh, fucking legs. You would be fully healed from that, and I would Uh. also give you. (laughs) 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 Oh, man! It's better than bleeding out. God! Oh, I think you clipped me a little there. (laughs) Oh, my God! Yeah, you're gonna take another. You're gonna have to fix that. I'm oh, not gonna you're gonna take that. another point, three points of dick damage. <laughs> what? Why, why, why did I get you're the massage gorilla? What oh, the no, hell, man? Oh no, you're still here. You're still here. You're still here. Oh, still here. Oh, oh, this is. Uh, <laughs> oh god! <laughs> you should really stretch before working out. <laughs> <laughs> What are your veins is going up? I'll get that. Activate yeah. your vinyasa flow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh, thank you. See, and and is... with that, you are now Namaste. standing at the bottom of this 10-foot well. You are looking out at the swamp around you, and you can hear the insects chirping. Oh, that's good, Barry. Um... The light here, you've noticed, hasn't really changed that much. The thick fog that enshrouds this place does a really nice job of uh, stamping out the light. And it is dark here. The floating um, the floating bugs that have a luminescent quality to them uh, help to illuminate the area a little bit. You don't need lamps or lights of your own. You are able to see, but it is dark. Um, and you look forward, imagining which way would be north. And you feel the rush of wind as the fog parts for just a moment and you see as you spin around and look that far off in the distance about a mile in in front of you there is clearly a tower that is slanted to the left here we go yes see the slanty tower there yeah do you remember what willa told us about the tower we were looking for oh it is a slanty tower where are we gonna find that that's the tower Hootsie is but a mile away. Oh, Hootsie, say so. Let's go. Hootsie, so close. Come on, so yes, Come on exactly Hootsie. Right. Are you guys fine? Are you guys fine? Thank you, Great Spirit. Thank Namaste. Thank you, Namaste. Thank you. Uh, I'm fine now, thanks to your bananas and uh, gorilla massage. My legs feel almost perfect. If I hadn't been wearing my shoes, them. it would have been much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling. Give you at least a little bit of trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I'm fine, but this one pant leg is ruined. I mean, it's cut all up by bone. We got one regular pant leg and one that kind of cuts off at the groin. You know, we're like a fucking dancer. We're, you, we're Dungeons and Dragons adventurers. We're, <laughs> your clothes will heal themselves as well as over a long rest. <laughs> well, Otherwise, we would be in shattered, tar- like <laughs> the suspension of rags. Uh, yeah, shattered rags by the yeah, tattered rags by the end of uh, an, an adventure. No, no. Uh, oh well, in that case, I'm fine. You feel free to put your pants back on, though. Oh, yeah. I was wondering why I was so comfortable. (laughs) All right, let's go to the fucking Slanty Tower. And with that, you begin to make your way through the swamp. 
<laughs> past the mangrove trees. Occasionally, the water does begin to rise, and it'll rise one foot, two foot, three foot, and then it Four. starts to go back down. Uh, it will rise one foot, two foot, and then go back down. But so far, it hasn't begun to rise the full ten feet that you had experienced while with the brigands. Five foot bunch. I literally just watched that like two nights it's ago. It's such a good movie. I love Beetlejuice. It's so good. One of my favorite movies of all time. I love it. Yeah, thank, so do I. It's un- unstoppable. It's unreal. Yeah. It is, it's a spectacular it's film. It's actually one of my favorite movies of all time. It is easily one of my favorite movies, Derek. Mm. Mm-hmm. Would you like to talk more about Beetlejuice? Nice fucking model! Yeah, I'm done. Clark Barr. Yeah. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Yes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, uh, the scene... Uh, where they're in that room and they got like a messed up face. Mm. Oh, um, got it. the scene where uh, yeah. the child protagonist is afraid to go to sleep at night because of uh, monsters under the bed. You come together after this harrowing experience <laughs> and with repaired legs and repaired loins, you begin to make your way through the swamp. And it is a difficult trek. You are moving at half speed while wandering through this swamp. And it takes longer than you had expected. But you do make your way through the trees. And on occasion, the winds will blow and the fog will part. And you're able to see bits and pieces of the slanty tower off in the distance. And though it's not, you're not getting as close to it as you'd like to in the amount of time, you do notice that you are getting closer to it and you haven't lost sight of it. But this swamp is different than any swamp that you've been been in before. This is unlike the swamps of Ogwe that you have all, uh, that you'd all grown accustomed to, the Kremi you had grown up in. This is a swamp that is ever changing. And as you move through it, you begin to notice something strange. That where the pools of murky water had been, it's almost as if they're moving and following you and collecting together until you find yourself staring down at a stream that had not been there before. But it's wide enough that it would be difficult to jump over. And it looks to be deep enough that you couldn't just walk through it. And there is equality to the water, unlike anything that you'd seen. A shimmering, opalescent quality. (laughs) And though it's still a shade of green, it's more a pastel seafoam green (laughs) than the dark, grayish, fetid waters of the swamp that you're familiar with. I need you all to roll a d8. Do we notice this before the eight. D8 roll? Thank you. Eight. Eight, no, five. What did you get? Eight, 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 five. five. Oh, who got the oh. eight? Get the eight. Uh, can you re-roll uh, the first eight? Oh, me? Oh. Yeah. He rolled the first yeah, eight. He rolled the first yeah. one. So oh. re-roll it oh. because you... Eight. Just... Two. Perfect. Um, you see this, this water, and you are caught off guard by it. It's, I will say that this role that you're making isn't any kind of a save. It just determines what you see as you look at this water. And as you make your way towards it, Gricko. You once again feel a similar feeling to how you had felt atop the well. That dizziness, that uncomfortability, Mm. that sense of being on the verge of unconsciousness Mm. as your eyes adjust to the water and all of you begin to see visions, Mm. but none of your visions are the same. Gricko, looking down into the water, you watch as a bullywug, bedecked in the trappings of a monarch, constantly adjusts his ill-fitting crown of lily blossoms while leafing through a large tome spread across his lap. Hidden inside the tome is a magazine clearly labeled Bully Jugs. 
Ooh, that was an end of module. I hope no, it was. No, it wasn't. I mean, <laughs> God, that I was hope, funny. I hope it was. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. I like the idea of him sitting there, like, hiding the fact that he's reading his dirty mag. And so I was trying to think of what a dirty mag uh, for a bully mug would be called, and bully jugs. The greatest ally so anyway. of King Schmebulok and Goblin Tobia. But you watch as this, oh. as this, um, as this Bullywug monarch is clearly living his day-to-day life and you watch for five whole minutes oh. entranced by oh. this as he leafs through his oh. naughty magazine oh. and uh, oh. occasionally you can't oh. hear the words that are being oh. said look away <laughs> look away man <laughs> i can't give him some privacy you can't oh. hear you can't hear the words that are being said but he is clearly interrupted on occasion and has to respond <laughs> to uh the people in his life <laughs> he's not Jerky let him off. finish, let him finish. <laughs> 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 he's just bored. No, oh, 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 no. oh, he's reading it for the article. <laughs> <laughs> Frost, mm. <laughs> you mm. see a different scene as you oh, stare into the water. The lords. <laughs> A hag with toad-like features relaxes in a pool of water while miniature versions of her ladle the water and pour it over her head and shoulders. As she bathes in this murky green algae infested water, these miniature versions, you have seen these before. One of them appeared to have popped out of nowhere when Hootsie was taken. (gasps) One of these toad-like creatures was the exact entity that had stolen Hootsie from Gricko at the Witchlight Carnival. And you watch as they ladle this disgusting water and pour it over the hag, the toad-like hag creature's body as she relishes in it, looking comfortable and cozy and warm. Thank God that's saggy. <laughs> Crummy. Your vision is different. A satyr whistles to himself as he reclines in a metal cage that dangles off the end of a broom over a lake. He doesn't seem to be all that concerned, but trapped he is, relinquishing himself to the life that he is living and the the fate that he has found himself in. As he dangles there in the cage, he whistles and hums to himself, just staring off into the distance. Gideon, you see an image, rows and rows of severed bullywug heads, all impaled on spikes. In this one, you can hear as the heads chatter to each other. The water ripples, and then just as quickly as the visions came, the water begins to sink down into the muck of the earth and where there had been a river, a shimmering, shining, seafoam green waters, there is nothing but muck and algae. What was that? Can you see that? Yeah, I saw the, I saw the bully woke thing he was talking about from earlier, all the heads. Wait, you saw... I mean, there was head involved, but... (laughs) (laughs) The fuck do you see? (laughs) (laughs) I I thought I knew amphibian anatomy, but... (laughs) Bully jokes. Oh. Wait, tell me exactly what you saw. Well, I saw... It was like spikes, like fields of spikes, man, and and bullywug heads, Pierre and other Pierre and and second Pierre and uh, Pierre Garcon, and and their heads are just on spikes, just cut off, and I don't know, man, like like hundreds, thousands, just bullywugs. What were they Dead. saying? Did, were they speaking? I, wanna, I mean, they were like like chittering, you know, like. <laughs> 
And that's like Buddy Wobbies do. Oh, that's what I heard too. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, yeah, it sounded just like that. That's got glue written all over it. Ooh. Wait, wait, hold on. Were their faces painted? No. <sighs> nah, they were clean. Uh, you know, normal Buddy Wugs. All right, maybe it's not him. Well, you, you're saying you saw Buddy Wugs. I mean, I saw a bully. Well, I saw bully. <laughs> and Gricko, and you had that vision as well. The same one that Gideon's telling oh, you that yeah. he saw. It was the exact same thing you saw at the That's the vision what killed me. What, what Gideon saw. Mm. I still would have preferred that scene. What are you saying? What'd you get this time? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I think it's important that we all share what we saw. There may be some clue that allows us to unpack this mystery and protect ourselves from the coven. Yeah, wait, was, was your bullet works face painting? No, no, I don't think it was. I mm-hmm. mean, it was it wasn't his face that was painted. <laughs> <laughs> I am regretting my choices to add something I thought was funny. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, 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 I mean, you're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's as if the god of the world has given us so much ammunition, it'd be a shame not to use it. <laughs> uh, well, Frosty, I, I, guess, I guess you're right. There was a, a bully work, a, a king of sorts. A monarch. A yeah. monarch of sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he was fiddling, uh, uh, well, first with his crown. <laughs> 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 what have you done? Dungeon Master. Oh. I, I do not make good choices. <laughs> well played. Well played. I do not make good choices. Oh. Um, <sighs> I know, and there was, you know, there was just a, a, a pamphlet of some kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and it was Bollywogs and uh, with mammalian qualities. I, I think mm-hmm. one of the stars was called a hawk mammal. And she, oh wow, I mean, ho, 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 but not, ho, ho, ho. and then he just, he just, he kept going, and I couldn't look away. Uh, You're not making any sense, Greg. Oh, oh did, did you watch? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> five straight minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, he kept getting. I was like, oh god, it's almost over, and if someone interrupted him, it would have killed a vibe. I'm like, oh, yeah. please stop interrupting him, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, it's just oh, oh, I, I couldn't. Do you think there's anything to be learned? Well, uh, first he did, <laughs> and then they're all reacting in horror. As it's, 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 this will be the part of the scene where it'll cut away the, the music, sound that cuts out, and, I'll, and I'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone is reacting at, in absolute terror. Yeah. <laughs> and some would be like, oh. no, that's not that's not great. Guy. That's not. <laughs> Okay, I don't. And then, oh, God, okay. Man. Okay. I'm not sure why you were exposed to this vision. You didn't even blink. That seems like totally out of character compared to these other visions. What did you see, Frost? The hag that I saw, because it's been weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Can you remind me the name? Was it Scabba? You've never seen it. Scabba. Oh, but the. So you I don't. I saw a saw... toad hag, but you also said it reminded me of the. No, so what you Little saw um, during the witch like carnival, which would have been a day ago, yeah. um, was Hours. this tiny little toad like creature that took Hootsie. Yes. It was not the masked girl that you saw in the mirror. No. Um, what you were seeing in this vision is a large form of that <clears throat> and these miniature versions of her that are ladling water on top of her. It's as if she's created these minions in her image. I see. Oh. So I saw the uh, the toad hag that we saw capture Pootsie, but they were all miniature. I hate that little guy. And they were bathing uh, some larger toadish uh for lack of a better word, hag, I think. Uh, some some sort of... Uh, uh, the hag's a toad. Like a bullywug or just something completely different? It, it, it was not like a bullywug. It had toadish features. 
You think so it's this is what she looks like. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ugh. So yeah, Toad's features very oh. apropos. Toad, Toad-like in quality and posture, uh, but she was bathing, and they were ladling this swampy water on top of her. So you're telling me you spent five minutes watching a king polish his crown, <laughs> and you spent five minutes watching some uh, lady bathe? You uh, have some kind of weird perverted vision? Well, that's what I mean. No, what I saw was some satyr in a gilded cage. He was just in loving his life, enjoying, you know, whistling and smoking on a corn cob pipe or something. I mean, he was just, what? he was having a good old time, but he was trapped, and he, he didn't mind. Mm. There must be some thread to all of these pictures. There was a book that he was hiding his pamphlet in, a tome of sorts. I feel like that might be the important thing, and I'll just cut him at a very inopportune time. <laughs> is, what I, is, is, is what I'm starting to to register here. I feel inclined just to write your vision just off entirely. I mean, There's got to be an answer to every vision, Grammy. <laughs> oh, I guess we wrote a D8. There's got to be, a, be an answer to every vision. Oh, well, so we know that there's some kind of frog king. Oh, and perhaps the oh, tome is the source of his power. And the crown is ill-fitting. You know what that means, don't you? Well, he didn't get to finish. Okay, you are your guess, Crummy. You know what that it means, means he's not fit to be king. And why, Frosty? Usurper! Well, why, why would you jump to that conclusion? Because if the crown of lilies was made for a monarch of frogs or toads or bollywugs, it would have fit that crowd, that monarch perfectly. Maybe he got turned into a frog. Oh, or perhaps it is the That's a young fairy tale. or the young son or daughter of a monarch who recently passed and perhaps has not grown up to the station. But either way, maybe he's just man. shirking his duties. He's uh, he's overseeing a failing kingdom, you know. Ah, uh, I know what it's like. Listen, like boy king, that's you know sort of coming to terms with his maturity and. <sighs> I feel like the crown doesn't fit because someone else was king, a monarch, and then they usurped it, or have risen. The old king monarch is missing. Or dead. wait, can that please? Was the villain's crown? Um, Rich, without showing um, what's on the other page and without what's looking on the other page, can you show Bev Lorna to chat? They want to see. Oh, shit. So. Uh, okay, let's go. Don't Get look, that. Mace. Don't look. Can we, like, hide this with, like, a book? Here, use the back of these papers. Oh, yeah. The back of these papers. That's exactly right, Greco. <laughs> oh, that's not Scabifer. I could have sworn that was going to be Scabifer. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, she got... Ooh. Oh, she kind of... Oh. Uh, 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 I don't care for it. Oh, Frosty, the way you describe her, she actually also, she looks like a toad, but she kind of looks like those gross turtles you see at the swamp with the noses. Well, bear in mind, when I saw her, she was entirely nude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably, yeah, not That's true. true. Yeah. Did she say, oh, wow, oh, I missed that. Why are hags always bathing. bathing and stuff? She was being washed by a bunch of frogs. <laughs> There's, uh, she's being held up by some sort of root system. Oh, uh, like a lily pad. Oh, oh I hate pad. everything about this description of the Frosty. It's so detailed, I can paint a picture in my head. Yes, yes. Well, in my head, wow. It's that hard, is... hard to push the details out of my mind, having seen her yeah, naked in this that's... fashion. Man, I think I actually preferred my vision. Nose is a good point. Good news, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> I've invented the thing longer! <laughs> How is the thing longer? She has the thing longer! <laughs> Okay. Good news, everyone. To um, shreds, you say. <laughs> so. Ah, that suits the savage piece. <laughs> <laughs> we can take that back. Oh, what, is, what is this piece of paper? Oh, the stage is set in a grand hall. <laughs> um. Do you think the swamp is trying to tell us something? What do you mean? 
The like, swamp itself. Yeah, because you know how to swamp. We saw that it went kind of like pastel, like Lisa Frank, before. It wasn't neon like Lisa Frank. Okay. It was like a like a light. Seafoam. Like an algae. Uh, was it like algae-like, or was it kind of like, I'm thinking like Easter, pastoral, like what I would hope the fate, what I would imagine pre-horrible uh, Bavlorna. Yes. Okay. Ah. See, did you notice the color there? It was nice and cheerful. Perhaps that is the remnants of the original uh, swamp or whatever this place was, a meadow. Well, maybe it's like Sabine trying to help us and show Ooh. us a vision with her limited power. Maybe that's just, you know, that's very all perceptive. she can do. I agree, Grico. I think that we should continue to... Uh, it doesn't feel like the curses when we are transformed. This was a vision that uh, I felt lucid and had my agency. I'm still Frost. It makes it feel safer or perhaps something worth trusting. What do you think she's trying to tell us? Uh, maybe that, that witch killed all the bullywugs? And, I mean, there's a... Just the knowledge. The, the information will allow us to <clears throat> defend ourselves or perhaps find some way to free her or solve the puzzles of the coven. Wait a minute. What order did the unicorns tell me? Dags. Well, let me think back. To yeah, my, my, my memory is not quite great. Mm. It was. I want to say this is Scabifer, but I want to make sure that I'm correct. Oh, this is called the Feywild notes. I'm way too far back. <laughs> what, what is the question that you're asking? I wanted to think if I could remember what order the unicorns told me of the hags. Oh. I think it would be very clear to you that this is Bevlorn of Lightstraw. Okay. I just want to make uh, sure. Bavorna was okay. first, and then yep. I stopped writing, but I wrote okay. down Bavorna <laughs> first. Yep. So, if I'm interpreting this, Zabilna, let me know. Come back to us in your pastel greatness. Is that what Frosty saw was Bavlona Brightstraw? Blight. Brightstraw. And she's. A frog, a toad, a turtle, a thumb, a swamp thing. And her little gross fellas are all little gross hers. Ooh. <laughs> and what I think is that, oh! Bollywog heads, severed. Gideon saw it, I saw it. The usurper, a coup, a great coup, a great massacre of Bollywogs uprising. The king or the monarch with the tome of importance. Hopefully the, the pamphlet's not of importance. Ah, uh, bully jugs. Bully jugs isn't of importance. It's called bully jugs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of importance, <laughs> and that the crown is not fit because they beheaded all of the frogs. And then, for we must seek out the satyr who is trapped in a gilded cage. I mean, so. Uh, oh, go ahead. What do you think? You think this, uh, the the hag somehow sided with this uh, unfit monarch to overthrow a bullywug kingdom and gave him the power to, like, kill exactly him all? Right. And then, you know, somehow the satyr is maybe relevant, or maybe the satyr was on the bullywug's team, and so <laughs> she locked him away. The satyr probably has some sort of power knowledge mm. that, he, that he, he, is, he or she is an asset that they can't kill that person, Sator. And so we must rescue them from that gilded cage. And you know, as the great professor once said, those who wish to be must, oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, we, I feel like that's something that we, we know, we have an idea of what's happening unless it's all crazy tricks. I think maybe it's just the key players of Prismia, maybe. Could be or, that, too. Or maybe just Hither. Or Hither, whatever, whichever one we're in. I we'll think it's Hither. And that we are learning this, what's happening right now. The key players, it's Need not... Need you all to roll a wisdom saving throw, huh! please. What? Oh, 18 for Grico. I'm going to roll the charm. Wait, Hootsie's going to roll the charm. I'm dead in the balloon! 
Oh, 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 oh now Grammy's dead in this room. <laughs> I rolled a four. Uh, nine total. So cool. Oh, I'm actually proficient. Uh, Derek? 18. Okay. You, Gricko, you are saying this as all of a sudden your body locks up, all four of you. And your eyes go milky white as you begin to see a vision appear to all of you. Gricko, a headless, child-sized scarecrow with metal lobster claws for hands, tries on some new heads, including an upside-down wooden bucket and a withered head of cabbage. It decides on a large large gourd. Your eyes flutter, and you look around, and it looks like it's gotten darker. Almost as if an hour, maybe two, has passed. Cremmy. Actually, we'll go. We'll go with Frost. Frost. Mm. <laughs> you see. <laughs> you feel dizzy. You see two marrow swim past each other in murky water, and then you come to, feeling as if a few hours have passed. Gideon. A short, mean-looking old woman wearing a crimson cap a leather apron and iron boots uses a cleaver to chop meat in a drab kitchen. And lastly, Kremi. You all watch as Kremi stands there, his eyes milky white, as his body shakes and convulses. His eyes move back and forth rapidly as he is apparently seeing a vision. A tall, thin figure wearing a pointy black hat and a hooded black cloak climbs a rickety staircase leading up to a large ramshackled house built on stilts. As the figure approaches the house, their shadow seems to detach from their body, move across the walls of the house, and crawl through an open window. And as you come to, you all gain your bearings, and you realize it doesn't just feel like a couple of hours have passed. A couple of hours have definitely passed, and it is be- night has come to the swamp. Get the fuck away from here! Yes, I, I saw more visions. We need to make it to the, at least the foot of the tower. We don't have to go inside, but we need to make camp anywhere but the swamp. We're not making camp till we get Hootsie. I don't know what that strange thing I just saw is. We can discuss it while we're running to Hootsie tomorrow. It'll take us in difficult terrain. We should have gotten there long ago. It only looked like a mile away, but we, there's no way of telling. We'll walk until we absolutely can't anymore, but we can't let our guard down. I'm going to glance over my shoulder and look for my shadow, and realizing that it's dark and that I wouldn't have a shadow. Be like, yeah, we should, we should fucking go. Yeah, we should get out of here. Assemble. Lead the way, go, go, go. You begin to move quickly through the swamp, and it hours pass, <gasps> but there are no convalescing of swamp waters obstructing your path. There are no will o' the wisps that ask you to listen. There are no bands of brigands that accost you, surround you, and steal from you. You are, for the most part unhindered as you make your way towards the slanty tower and as the night continues to progress the winds get stronger and thicker you see a tornado build off in the distance swirling fog around as it forms and then disappears not strong enough to take its full form and as the wind moves through, you can you perpetually gain uh, glances of slanty tower as it gets larger and larger and larger as you get closer and closer and closer. Until eventually, you make your way to your destination. A crumbling stone tower rises out of the swamp, leaning at such an angle that it threatens to keel over. Black brambles surround the base of the tower and cling to its lower half. Mm-hmm. Hanging from the crenellations on the lower side of the tower's peak is a large woven basket at the end of a tangle of ropes and tattered fabric. (gasps) 
The basket dangles 30 feet above the surface of the swamp. Hmm. You look around and you see that the brambles are thick and they have been growing for many, many, many years. It would be difficult to make your way through them at this point. You can get close, but it's going to take some work to get to the base of the tower, should you choose to do so. Hoochie! Hoochie! Hoochie, uh, are you in there? I can... Shush! Uh, shush? Uh, shush! Hoochie? What have you done with Hoochie? I'm in a bit of a bind, as you can observe. I, Sir Talavar, as one of the Summer Queen's loyal servants, ask that you free me. You see, I was in the midst of a daring escape from the, the vile Bavlorn of Lightstraw when our balloon was set upon by an ill wind and set plummeting to its current unfortunate location. My pilot, the Honorable Wigglewog, did not survive. <laughs> I've been trapped up here for a while now. Help me. I must tell my queen of the fall of Prismere. And I have this injured owlbear that made its way upon the winds of the tornado. Oh, oh and two serpents are asleep in the brambles just outside the tower door. If you awaken them, they might put the squeeze on you. Or worse, devour me. And that is where we'll end the session. Oh, uh, Hootsie! 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 A very charming little explorer fellow. Oh, real quick, Gid, while I'm thinking about it, can I get my belt back? Oh yeah. yeah, his pants Walking have been falling this down this entire time. Around my, my upper thigh this whole time. <laughs> it barely fits. I mean, this is a bell. <laughs> it's not like garter bell. Yeah, you know? there you go. Garter yeah. bell. Yeah, sorry about all the blood on it. <clears throat> We're not done. What's next? Avantress and chill. Avantress and chill. We are going to chill after that uh, session. Avantress and chill. Uh, our first, like, uh, our first full session in the Feywild. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels, feels so very felt. It's so good. It's it. crazy how it feels unique from the carnival. Oh yeah, mm. but still incredibly fey. It's fucking bizarre. Yeah, it still has that I fey love DNA, you know. It's, even, it's more fey DNA. Yeah. Even though the carnival was way more... I don't know. I'm trying to figure it D out. DN fey, perhaps? Uh, anyway, we're just going to... Let's let's start with Mansion and Chill. Don't go anywhere. Oh, don't go anywhere. We have a merch store. If you want Uncle Glorbo merch, buy our shirts. If you want Uncle Glorbo merch, buy a shirt you don't want so that we can no, afford no, no. a shirt buy, you do Only want. buy stuff that you want. I was not done with my oh. pitch, Michael. We're going in Avantress and chill. What's next? If you're if you can't stick around. Oh, which light? Yeah. Uh, next, next, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. That's right. Next Wednesday. Yeah. Next uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. That's right, Richie. And then the following Wednesday, more witch light. More witch light. Every week. And then the following Friday, uh, Icebound. I think that's correct. I think that's right. And then we have Icebound on Friday, once a month. Uh, if you're not on our Discord, <laughs> join Discord. That's where we hang out between our sessions. We're there all the time. Uh, you also get a calendar of our events there. So when yeah. we lie to you about when our stuff is, you just check the Discord. That's right. Uh, and we also have Patreon hanging out at the end of the month for Mind Flayer tier and above. If you're so interested, or Patreon. can you scroll up for me really quickly? There was someone who said who called me Mistress of the Dungeon, so I need to read that. Mm -hmm. This Queen of the Dungeon. Oh. Read oh. It. Oh. Can I do a YouTube pitch before we cut over to Vance and Chill, so we can cut it out and put it at the beginning of the session? You can do whatever <laughs> you want, Mike. <laughs> Hello, YouTubers. Welcome. We would like you to do. Make that noise as you smash that like button, subscribe to, to this channel, hit the bell icon, select all or everything. I can't remember. I don't do YouTube, but you do. Please do all that. We also have a merch store and a Patreon. Link is in the description. Thank you. He's impermeable. I know. That's very nice. We're cutting over. Don't go